Our next inductee is our only, to my knowledge, World Golf Hall of Famer in attendance tonight, and Pat Bradley, and she will be introduced by our Hall of Fame Committee Chair, Dave Larravee. So I had an opportunity to meet Pat as she came in this morning, uh, this evening, uh, her, her mom Kathleen and her brother and sister-in-law. So welcome back to New Hampshire. Glad to have you here. I have the honor of, of reading a little something that can uh, prepare you for Pat and her, her comments. Pat is a native of Westford, Mass, um, and was the only daughter of the six children of Richard and Kay Bradley. Her father was an avid golfer, and Pat's love of the game began at age 11 when she began playing out of Nashville Country Club. She won the New Hampshire Women's Amateur at 67, and she reminded me that was 50 some odd years ago, uh, and 69, and the New England's Women's Amateur in 72 and 73. In 1970, she was selected as an All-American at the Florida International University. Bradley officially joined the LPGA Tour in 1974 and got her first win at the Girls Talk Classic in 76, a year in which she finished second six times. She won three times in 78, which led to an even more success in the, in the early to mid 80s. She led the LPGA Tour in wins during the 83 and 86 seasons. Her first major championship came at the Peter Jacobson Classic in 1980, and she added a U.S. Women's Open title in 81 and a Demurrier Classic Championship in 1985. In 1986, she won three of four LPGA majors and finished fifth in the U.S. Women's Open to narrowly miss the Grand Slam. That year, she won the money title in the VAR Trophy. She won four times in 91, captured her second money in scoring titles, and was named the LPGA Player of the Year for a second time. Her last victory on the LPGA, LPGA Tour came in 1995. Her 31 LPGA Tour victories ranked 16th in all time, and she was the third woman in history to complete an LPGA Career Grand Slam. Her six major championships ranked 10th in all time. She was a participant on three Solheim Cup teams and captain in 2000. Pat was the first LPGA player to cross the $2 million, $3 million, and $4 million milestones in career earnings. She was second, the second golfer in LPGA Tour history to post a score of 28 for nine holes, which at the time she did in 1984 was a tour record. That record held to 2005. She is one of four golfers in LPGA history to win three majors in a single season. Lastly, in her hometown of Westford, there is a road, the Pat Bradley Highway, named in honor of her. And in 2003, uh, excuse me, August 3rd, 2005, she threw out the first pitch at Fenway Park. <laughs> Hopefully they don't need you to do it tonight. Please join me in welcoming the 1991 World Golf Hall of Fame inductee and now member of the New Hampshire Golf Hall of Fame, Pat Bradley. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank the New Hampshire Women's Golf Association and New Hampshire Golf Association, and especially the Hall of Fame Committee for this great honor. I'd also like to congratulate my fellow inductees. It's such a wonderful evening to share this honor with you. New Hampshire, Nashua Country Club, to be specific, is where I started my golf journey at the age of 11. My dad, Richard, learned the love of golf as a caddy with my mom's brothers. He made a promise to himself that when he would introduce the game of golf to his children down the road. I grew up with five brothers. I played team sports with them. And one day playing football, they told me, Pat, hike and block. I said, what? <laughs> They said, you're such a good hiker and you're such a good blocker, we need you there. They had all the glamorous positions, quarterback, wide receiver, I hiked and blocked. I came home and said to my dad, I wanna go with you the next time you play golf. We were members at Nashua Country Club. My dad brought me to meet the head professional, John Werbel who was a wonderful teacher and coach, and he was a protege to the great Phil Friel. I started taking lessons with John. He was a kind, very patient, always helpful, took me under his wing. He was a stickler for the basics, solid grip, 
correct dress position and ball position. There weren't many young girls playing golf in the 60s, so I had to rely on the wonderful membership at Nashua Country Club for playing and guidance. Not only did I get my competitive drive and spirit from my brothers, but I also got it from the MEM members at Nashua too. I played with them often, and there was no crying in golf. <laughs> my two New Hampshire amateur wins, my New England win right here at Manchester Country Club, helped propel my thoughts to play golf in college. I played college golf at Miami Day Junior College and then transferred to Florida International University. My college years were successful and I improved my game every year. But in the summer, I always came back to Nashua. I worked with John and started talking to my family about turning pro. From those talks, a group of 12 generous men, my Nashua 12 as I've called them, got together and gave me enough money to go to the LPGA qualifying school in Miami. After a three-day tournament, I was medalist, and I received my LPGA player's card January 1974, and I was off and running, traveling the world. I spent 30 years on tour. I had an amazing career, and I was blessed. But the most cherished and most important part of my journey was the love and support I received from my family. My dad, Richard, my mom, Kathleen, who's with me tonight at a young age of 95. <laughs> my five brothers, my brother Rick, my brother Tom, my brother Mark, who's Keegan's dad, my brother John and my brother Chris, who is here tonight with me with his wife, Suzanne. Thank you so much, Mom. I could not have accomplished any of this without the support of so many. So I thank you all very much again for this great honor. Thank you very much. <laughs> 